Hello and welcome back to Factorio tightening the belt mega base guide. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me here again. I have the game paused because we have this uh, last uranium 238 or 235 here that is going to go in and this is the last one we need so I want to make sure that we're here and I can show you when this turns on. Uh, also you guys had mentioned I hadn't put an output for this it's because I hadn't decided if I wanted to extend this or not but for now I'm just feeding it back in to here and it's kind of just going in a circle which should work. So this guy is now going. I'm gonna throw some speed in there, and uh, he's gonna chug along and get us our uh, our first extra uh, two two thirty five. And instead of investing it back into uh, into like this one, I'm actually gonna try to nab it and and then use it to make a a fuel cell a fuel cell batch here, uh, so we can get some nuclear power going. So this guy should be done here shortly. I just kind of want to show you. Someone had mentioned they're not sure how the things are wired up. Uh, so essentially these two inserters are just wired to this chest. And I showed the conditions in a previous episode. And then this inserter is just wired to the uh, input and output of this combinator. Okay, so you can see these guys are passing and then one gets through. And that actually snuck back in there, which is uh, not really what we want. So I'm going to grab that and it, it, it will continue to work because it's still going to be passing through. So that's that. Now let's go ahead and get our nuclear parts. However, on the way down there, very, very exciting. Uh, an update came out for Factorio for the Experimental 016 about a day ago, yesterday sometime. And the major thing in it is they fixed belt compression, which is amazing. So they've made it so inserters and side loading do compress a belt again, I think. Um, I. I I mean, it says that, that the wording is a little weird uh, in terms of the inserters. It says like rows of inserters, so I'm not sure if like this works or if the inserters actually have to be literally in a row like this. Um, so we should test this here a little bit. Uh, what I want to do is, uh, let's see, how, how, how do we want to test this? <laughs> we don't actually have something to really test this on. Uh, okay, here, here's what we'll do. So we do. I do want to test this here together. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get rid of this and uh, simply just draw a line there. So this is now just a solid, uh, solid belt of stuff. And we're gonna cut this input. We're gonna take this splitter out. And I'm going to drain this belt as much as I can. And we're going to see if this does in fact compress at the end there. I'll just throw the stuff in logistics network. And it looks to me, let's go ahead and grab a little more of it just to be sure. And it looks like it does indeed compress. Check that out. They're inserting there are no gaps. Previously, before this update, uh, there would be gaps in here and there are none now, which is fantastic. So we don't need this janky little like weird side thing with the splitters anymore, which is awesome. So I'm gonna tear this up uh, I'll fix the other smelters uh, here in a little while, uh, not, not on camera because that's not particularly interesting. Uh, but we can now do our standard smelting lines and we can also do proper side loading which is fantastic. It's super exciting. So anyway, let's head down to our parts here for the nuclear stuff. We will want to make a fuel cell or fuel cell batch. I keep uh, forgetting they make 10 which is actually really good for us. So let's go ahead and I'm going to, I am actually going to turn this. I did wire the condition up, but I don't really want another reactor right now, uh, simply because this is going to last us for quite a long time. I'm going to take, uh, we will take all these just so I don't have to come back. Uh, we're not going to take all of these. We're going to take four, and we're going to take, we'll take a stack of this. Okay. So we have all that. Now, in terms of how nuclear works, uh, it's it's actually somewhat similar to steam, but once you kind of understand how it works, it's it's pretty straightforward. It's uh, it kind of just is a different a different order of things than steam, but the the general concepts are still pretty much the same. So we're gonna run up here because it does need water to work. So this is our really only our water source here. And we'll come up here. We will actually, uh, we will want to grab some of this because we will need it for the uh, fuel cell thing. 
And this guy is chugging along. We've already made five extra, you can see in here, which is fantastic. Okay, so what do we want to do this? Uh, we could do this, really, I guess, above steam. I don't plan to expand the steam any more than this. So let's tear this up, these, uh, these logs, and we're going to put this down. These nuclear graphics is like my second or third favorite graphic in the game. It's so cool. Uh, okay, let's, uh, it, let's think. The layout, I'm just trying to think in my head here really quick. I may make up a layout. There's all kind of uh, different setups you can do with this. And uh, you can find them on like Reddit or the forums, or I think there's a Factorio Prints, I believe is a website where there's all kind of stuff. Uh, or my Discord in the Blueprints section, there's probably stuff you can find. So let's, uh, let's see, we could actually start, you know, let's, let's do it like here. Okay, so we have our reactor. This is our reactor, which looks super cool, and it as well glows green in the dark. Well, it glows green anyways, but it looks cooler in the dark. And this guy intakes fuel. So how does this work? If you've never dealt with the nuclear power before, then I will, I'll go through this. So with our steam power, the boilers take in fuel and water, right? And they, they use the fuel to create heat and heat the water then to create steam and go into your steam engines, which use that to create power. Pretty straightforward. This is almost as straightforward, just a little bit different. Whereas, so this guy takes fuel and this creates heat on its own. Okay, so this is pretty much the boiler, -ish, except that, that it doesn't take water. The, the, the heat exchangers, this next part, are what actually take the water. So the main difference here, as you might be, uh, you know, thinking to yourself, is that uh, the heat exchangers are acting exactly like the boilers, except that the heat exchangers aren't taking in fuel, they're only taking in water, and the heat is actually coming directly off of this reactor. Okay, now, how, how does this, let's see, I think I may, how do I want to do this? Because this layout is going to be somewhat important. Okay, I've changed my mind how I want to lay this out. <laughs> I've completely changed my mind. Let's go ahead and... I want to make sure I have enough room. Okay, it's going to do that. Now, these, so these guys have essentially four different slots. They have the water input, which is those that top and bottom one with the two little blue arrows. There's the blue arrow to the, to the left side, which is your steam output. And then there's this little hookup, which is actually a heat pipe hookup. And the heat pipe is, is how the heat transfers from your reactor to the exchangers, okay? Well, this is what we've picked up here, is this heat pipe. And this works just like a pipe in regards to you can just drag it along like this. You can walk over it, luckily, which is really nice. There's no underground versions, again, obviously, because you can walk over it. Uh, but this guy's going to transfer heat. And you can see their temperature, 15 degrees Celsius. And this is also 15 degrees. Okay, so th there's no fuel in here. And, and the reason I haven't put fuel in here yet is because, as I mentioned briefly in a previous episode, this thing will burn fuel no matter what. If there's fuel in here, it's going to be burnt. Like, e even if it's not hooked up, if there's no power draw, and it will consume a fuel cell at a rate of one fuel cell every 200 seconds, okay? So, uh, this is, you know, again, it's like, is this something? I can't actually make this by hand. It does take 10 seconds, but we don't even need an assembler. So, that's why I haven't put it in, and you may want to design some sort of smart system. There's all kinds you can find on the internet. Um, I'm not actually great with the smart systems and once you get enough like Cobrex processing to make a ton of these I don't really see a point because you're just making fuel cells faster than you could possibly burn them uh, but that's why I haven't put fuel in so this is going to start burning it the, the second I put it in here even though there's no draw and this guy's going to create create heat now this is where the ratios come in you can see their energy consumption 40 megawatts so that's the energy consumption but I also like to think of it as the energy output so this essentially generates 40 megawatts worth of heat or energy you can see there this is energy consumption 10 megawatts so this is giving 40 and this takes 10 which means this can support four right because 10 times 4 is 40 okay so this can support four of these heat exchangers and you can hook them just directly through each other like this the water will pass through just like they do with the boilers and the heat pipe will run along the back and then you can have your turbines out here okay because the steam's going to come out and then you would hook up your turbines now, before we get to that point, there's a few important notes here. Uh, this will not actually start doing anything until this reactor hits, I believe it's 500 degrees, uh, and then it will start 
heating things up. So this needs to hit 500 degrees before it will even start generating steam. So it's it can be kind of deceiving. Like if you throw your thing down and put the fuel in and it, and it seems like it should be working and you're not getting any steam, uh, make sure that your your reactor is hit 500 and your heat pipes are at five, like getting to 500 and these are as well. Uh, and it will take a while for your heat pipe to heat up the farther down the line it gets because it does diminish over distance. So keep that in mind as well. Now this is where it gets really interesting. These have a neighbor bonus. You can see down there neighbor bonus 0% because there's no other reactors here. But this is where you can get some pretty crazy nuclear setups because these guys can kind of transfer heat between each other and get a bonus based on adjacent reactors. And by adjacent, if I had another reactor, this would be uh, easier to explain. But uh, essentially, actually, let's make a refinery because I believe it's the same size. Actually, no, I think it's smaller. We'll see. Um, but by adjacent, I mean entirely adjacent, okay? Uh, it is the right size. So it has to be adjacent like this, it, like directly next to each other, not uh, offset like doing this with a reactor is not going to be considered adjacent, okay? It has to be exactly ad adjacent. And you can pretty much tell, so all your heat pipe hookups here, these little heat pipe hookups are all hooked to each other on the next one. And each one is going to give a neighbor bonus of 100%. So... Again, this can get pretty crazy because if you do like four, for example, like one here, one where I'm standing, one down here, and then one over here, so you just have a square, then each one of these is getting a 200% bonus because there's adjacent one here and here, and then for this one here, it's gonna be this guy and this one next to it, so on and so forth. So each one of these reactors then is essentially acting as three reactors because it's a 300, or four reactors, sorry, because no, no, it is three because it's a 200% bonus on top of itself. Okay, so it, it's doing the, the work it normally does plus 200%. So in a square of, of two by two uh, for total, this is going, each one's going to react is essentially three reactors. Uh, however, some of the best setups are ones that are that are 2x. So too, too deep here like this by however long. Right, because going going like three by three would technically give a better bonus, but you're not going to really be able to get fuel in because there's not going there's not going to be anywhere to get fuel in for some of them. Uh, so going two by x is really good because if you go like, for example, like three, so like one, two, and then a third, this one here in the middle is actually going to get a huge bonus because it's going to get one, two, three here it's going to get uh it's going to get a 300 percent bonus so it's acting as essentially four reactors itself and as we add more here it'll start to make more sense but that's pretty much how these guys work so we have this now let's hook up some water and start turning this thing on so i'm just going to run the water down here okay so remember the reactor can support four heat exchanges that's that's one reactor okay now if we had a one next to it to give it a neighbor bonus this could now support eight as could the other one so you can see how it starts to stack pretty quickly. Now each one of these can support about 1.7 uh, uh, turbines. So what I like to do is just do two for each. Uh, this would be, uh, well there's several ways you could do it depending how you set do your setup. Uh, you could do, so there's four of these, if we just did two each that would be eight. Uh, which is a little a bit more because if we if we multiply 4 times 1.7 that's going to give us I believe it's like 6.8 or something that's just multiply 1.2 times 4 is 6.8 okay so this can support 6.8 now if you want to for example do this and then just do uh, seven, right? You want to round up because if you go six, there's going to be a waste because this can actually support 6.8. So you're, you're wasting almost a full one worth. But if you go seven, uh, there's going to be six that work fully and then the seventh one will work, you know, 0.8 uh, to efficiency. So it's better to, to round up for this. So you could just go seven like in a row or whatever and, uh, and that'll work. But a lot of setups tend to just do two off of each boiler and uh you know the second one in in the in the line here won't ever work fully uh but this usually one it kind of looks nicer i think and it's just easier to set up in some in some aspects so we're just going to do this and i mean it will be the same amount of power regardless like it doesn't you know it'll be the same amount of power it's just that 
you're maybe wasting some materials like you know because some of these won't be working fully but in the end it's really not that big of a deal so that's that now if we want to be able to put power poles in here we would maybe want to do the same thing we did with the steam engines uh, because like put a pipe in here but now that we have substations we can actually avoid that so the substations are essentially the last tier of power uh, distribution and they have a supply area of 18 by 18 so as you can see here this guy if we just put him here he's just going to supply everything okay if we do that now these are these are really good right each one of these if fully working will provide 5.8 megawatts it would take about 16 engines to provide that amount uh, give or take a little bit so each one of these is essentially equal to 16 engines right so these first four are going to work fully 100% all the time. So that right there is like 20, 24, 25 steam engines worth. And then these ones are gonna work not quite, maybe like half as much, but that is still a ton. And, and the good thing is, this doesn't actually require like normal fuel, like fossil fuels, right? Because, you know, well, we're kind of having some coal issues here and there once in a while. So this is really nice on that aspect as well. Okay, so these guys are going in the steam, we'll just transfer between them. Now you can see here, uh, fluid consumption is 0 out of 60. So if this is working fully, it should be getting 60 out of 60 uh, steam. And it, it, it does consider the steam is fluid. So uh, you can see their maximum temperature 500 degrees. So it won't ever go above 500, uh, but it, it needs to get to 500 to actually work fully, just kind of like the steam engines have to get to 165 to work fully. Uh, so there's that. Now let's hook this up. Just do that and we will throw the fuel in here. I'm going to, let's see, so 200 times 10 is 2,000. 2,000 divided by 60 is like 30 something. 2,000 divided by 60, 33. So this will last for about half an hour. Okay, this will last for about 33 minutes, which is not bad. I mean, cause I can just, we've already probably made like 10 or 15 more, 23 more extra Corrects, which you know is another 230 fuel cells. So you can see why and this is a tiny setup like you know later on We're gonna have something like ten times the size working So you can do a smart thing if you like doing smart systems to like have it pull out extra fuel or only insert fuel when it needs to Totally go for it uh, for me personally I don't see the point because you know once you get a decent correct setup going you pretty much just have infinite fuel cells uh, but we're gonna insert this in and you'll see how this is gonna work. So he lights up, glows all nice, and you can see this is starting to lower. And over here, you see the temperature is starting to rise a bit. The temperature will rise quicker, again, with neighbor bonus as well. Uh, it will kind of bump things up. So this is gonna take a while, it has to hit 500. We're not gonna stand here the whole time. But you can see the heat starting to creep up through this pipe, but you can see it is much lower the farther down you get here. We'll come back and check this out, but this should provide us with quite a lot of extra power once we need it and pretty much shut down quite a few of these steam engines. So this guy is cranking along nicely, passing everything through. Uh, right now it's just passing all the extra through um, until it hits the 80 or whatever. You can see there it's done 66, so it has to do 14 more and then this one won't pick up anymore and uh, it'll move on to the next one. Okay, so that's chugging along really nice and We'll come down here let me make sure all of our oil and such is good so research i keep forgetting to do research uh someone asked about that i don't really have a uh, a good reason to not be doing research aside from i just kind of forget let's get uh we could get a personal report mark two but we don't really have the power in our power armor to do that uh the never, next level speed mod uh, or speed modules and efficiency modules would be good so we're going to run down here and I think for the rest of this episode, maybe we could actually set up some module production. We have level one and two productivity. Uh, this is gonna get expensive, but that's fine. We have quite a bit of resources. So, like I said last time, I think it is uh, 10, five, two for this. Okay, now efficiency, I'm not really gonna make. Uh, I'm gonna make a little build for it because we do need five efficiency modules for the power armor mark two. Uh, if we find that somewhere in here or not power yeah so this guy needs five inch efficiency three modules 
Uh, so we will make a little build for that. Other than that, I'm not really going to ever use efficiency modules. Uh, not that they're bad by any means, uh, but I just never really use them because I don't, I don't have, I don't have a use for them. <laughs> you know, I don't care about pollution, and I once I get my nuclear power up, I'm never really going to have power problems. So it's just not going to really be. There's not going to be much of a point. Okay, so these guys. Let's see. This is ratio to the science. So we probably don't want to pull off of this. Uh, what we could do. I'm trying to think if we really do we really want to pull off of this line probably not we probably want to like split it yeah we should probably split it okay so looking at this speed module threes okay so these are going to require red and greens this one's going to require red and then blues and then this and then the next one is going to require red blues as well i think or maybe just blues no red and blues as well okay so if this one comes down here, and we're out of belt, darn it. I know it's forgetting something. Now we could do, well, you can kind of, you can't see that's the thing. You can't really do uh, a proper half build uh, of that because that would be like five, two and a half, one, and you obviously can't do two and a half. So some things are gonna be kind of off. Uh, you know, so I'm just gonna do a full build. We probably won't be able to feed it because this is this thing eats modules eat circuits like absolutely crazy. But we can at least get a few so that we can throw some speed threes in the Covrex, and then we'll get some productivity module threes. Uh, Power armor mark two is something I would like to work towards. Uh, actually, how far off are we from that? Not too far. We actually just need the modules, and and then we can pretty much get it. So maybe maybe we want to do the efficiency instead of productivity at the moment. Okay, so let's just do, uh, what is this, 10? No, this is more than that. So two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Well, now I had done some sort of direct insertion thing here, which I'm not sure if I'm able to do again properly. It doesn't seem that way. <laughs> uh, let's see, is there, let, let's, we're coming up with a build on the spot. In my, in my last series with Catherine of Sky, I did what I consider to be a pretty decent build with this, like, direct insertion, but I, I totally forgot how I'd done it. Because five of these needs to go into two. Hmm, I guess it doesn't really matter. So if we do like, yeah, maybe we just put them on a belt, huh? Okay, there's that one, and let's grab this one. Okay, so now we'll set these to level twos. These guys can directly insert. And then these ones will need, oh, that's a level one, whoops. If I didn't catch that, I know you guys would have. Okay, so these are also going to need blues and reds. So what we could do here, again, using the priority splitter thing, which is super nice. We can take some reds off of here. So output, right, and reds. Let's clear this a little bit. It's always like makes me think of like Christmas, like candy canes. <laughs> oh, this is saying, okay, that won't actually work. Hmm. So it's not gonna, okay, we'll have to like do it at, at the end. Okay, there we go. So these are gonna come around and then this also, this is gonna need blues, which, do you have blues over here? And this is going directly to blue science yeah, I feel fairly comfortable splitting off that. How we're gonna merge it over here decently uh, is beyond me. Actually, different, different plan. We're gonna do kind of what we did uh, over here somewhere, is we're gonna pull off the end after science. So these are gonna come over here, and actually we could just kind of match that and output uh, blue circuits. We don't, we obviously don't want the speed modules. So that way science is guaranteed to get it first. 
And then this can just come down. Oh. Like that. And the uh, level threes will need the blues and reds as well. So I'm actually going to merge that there. And the side loading should compress now. This will be a decent experiment to see. Alright, you're going to side load and compress. You are indeed fantastic. I love it. Alright, so you go here. Right. Hold on. Yeah, and these, these are going to need to output somewhere. This is getting... Th this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is not ending up quite how I had uh, envisioned, unfortunately. Okay, so you're going to grab like that. And then these guys can export onto a belt, I guess, because we can't really get these all inserted nicely into the uh, two of the other things we're going to need. So what we could do... Because these are actually going to need it as well. So let's just, let's just do them down here. I mean, this is... Oh, it was clean. Is there some other... Is there a better way to do this? <laughs> Probably. Um, okay, well... Hmm. I may have to watch the video of the Explore series where I did this, because I really like the build I'd done, and now I just don't remember it. Alright, well, what we can do... Let's just do, like, that. It's a little bit silly. Uh, but it looks a little better, uh, at least to me, so that'll work. Uh, Longhand inserters are fine here because, you know, this takes 60 seconds to do, so inserting 10 of these is, is it's easily doable in 60 seconds, even with a longhand inserter. All right, so we've got that. We want you guys to grab here, and this is going to absolutely disappear our circuits. <laughs> like, it's, gonna, it's ridiculous. It's pretty crazy how many circuits these modules eat. Apparently this is like the worst power pull setup ever. Okay, so you are gonna grab like that and then they can just export into a box. And I think we will do a circuit condition again uh, because, I oh, already had one, uh, because we don't need a, fa a stack of these right now. And that, I mean, that's extremely expensive even for our, our size base. So we're gonna wire these and we're just gonna say speed modules are less than, let's just say, 10. There we go. Okay. So these guys should start cranking once they get their fourth one. And there we go. That's going to go. And our circuits are going to start disappearing real quick. Productivity 3 is done. I want to get Efficiency 3 as well, just so we can get that power armor uh, ready to be researched. And let's go ahead and we can actually map view, I think. Yeah, let's check this out. So you can see... Man, isn't that cool? Check that out. Steam coming out, those turbines. So these guys are 100%. Uh, you can see down there, available performance. Now the fluid, I did, uh, I misspoke a little bit earlier. The fluid consumption works the same on these as it does with these steam engines, where it's only doing what it needs. So right now it's only 38 out of 60 because the thing isn't on fully, or, or it's not under full demand, I should say. And then this one is, is also, it says available performance full, even though I said it would be... Uh, like around half. The reason for that is because it's not under full demand. If this does become under full demand, you will see this second set here drop down because it will be, you know, it'll be pulling. Right now, this has room to play around, so it's it's doing full. Uh, but yeah, so this guy is now at 660. Um, eventually, I believe this will get up. Yeah, it will very slowly get up to a thousand degrees. Uh, and you can see here, this pipe is all over 500. These are um, over 500 as well, so they're. Given the steam, and there we go. Now, if we click on this, you can see here, 31.1 uh, megawatts being generated, and and uh, this is doing 70 megawatts. I think the steam engines are taking priority. Like this cannot supply our whole base, but if we were to cut off power from these, um, these guys would kick in fully. But uh, but there you go. So we have it set up. We have it good and ready in case we do kind of exceed our power demand again, or we start running out of. Uh, the the like fossil fuels for the wow this these bots terrified me <laughs> thought they were bugs for a second um, in, in case we do run out of the coal or whatever for the steam power then we will be uh, be able to kind of supplement with the nuclear and actually I am wondering how how is our thing doing down here 
It's all, it's all backed up, so I mean, I think we're okay. I did want to check this. So this guy has done 80, so he's actually stopped now at this point, right? You can see the little red light, he's now stopped, which is perfect, this is what we want. And he's continuing to work, uh, mostly, and this one now has one in it, so it must have like just gotten to that last bit. And we actually, I think as I took one out, yeah. This should have 40 in it, so it can continually do the process. Um, it had 39 because I'd taken the one out to make the fuel cells. Uh, but just as a closing thing, some some people had asked when I when I demonstrated this setup, like why why would you do 80 instead of 40? And the reason for that is so it can continually work because this is going to export its 40 and it's 40 in here, so it can boom instantly start again, right? If I had only done 40 on this, this would not have had that extra 40 sitting in here, which means that it had to wait to turn on until it reinserted the the 40 plus the one it had exported. So that's why I do 80, uh, because it allows us to just work constantly. Which, I mean, you know, it's personal preference. If you don't really care, then then feel, feel free to do uh, 40, and you would just set that in here, do 40 instead of 80. You know, if you don't really wanna waste that extra bit. Now this is building up. We have one chest totally full, and another chest like a third of the way full. Uh, so we will need to start using this, and what we can use this for is uranium ammo, which is uh, quite expensive. I think I'm gonna wait a little bit to do that just because I do want to dedicate our circuits and stuff to the modules. But once we get the desired modules, then we will do the uranium ammo because we definitely need to start using up that, uh, that 238. Now this does allow us as well to process our used up fuel cells, which is actually something I need to go do as a last bit here, which is very important. Uh, these can consume fuel cells will leave behind the empty empty cartridges and this will actually stop working if it gets backed up so we need an export here you can see here uh, if this does back up it'll stop working because its output will be full so you can turn these used up ones uh, into uh, 238 again through that process i showed here so let's go ahead and export now this would be a good use if we had a bot network up here this would be a good use for an active provider chest uh, kind of going back to the discussion where I talked about the logistic chests, uh, because you know you don't want the chests to fill up either. Uh, for now, I think actually I will use one just so that when we do extend the network, it'll be here. Uh, so it's blinking at me because there's no network, but this would be a good use because then it's going to just constantly be emptying this out into storage to make sure it never backs up. And, uh, and there you go. So that is a good use for that, which I believe some people had mentioned, but I figured I should mention as well. And that should do it. We are at 32 minutes and we have nuclear power set up. We got module, uh, speed module three set up. We will do efficiency threes as well, or I may do that off camera. And then we can do some power armor and I will put speed modules in the Cobrex as well again, because we cannot put productivity, but we want this to be going as much as possible. So that's gonna do it guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and uh, it helped make uh, nuclear make a little more sense. If you do have any questions or anything, leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer I am feeling uh, not great, so I'm falling behind on comments, but I will try to <laughs> catch up on those and, and get anything I missed. But as always, thanks again, and until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.